Let's see. And that's it. Hey, it's Tim. Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. I think we're live. This is always a gamble I play this each week. But I feel like Ichil Zimel joined me from Chicago. Whoa. Whoa, wait a minute. I was going to say... I am not in Chicago. Yeah, I didn't. I paused. I stopped. And uh, you know what? You're not in Chicago. So Jill is joining us from the road, undisclosed location. She's in a bun uh, yeah, bunker <laughs> underground, avoiding the <laughs> nuclear strikes happening in throughout the country. So, yeah, so Jill is joining us uh, there from remote location, undisclosed. Uh, we are talking lots of cool stuff tonight, making sure your live stream is live. There it is. See? I can just talk during an awkward moment while I'm watching the uh, uh, YouTube to make sure things are live. Multi-faceted, skilled professional. That's why, yeah, big bucks over here. Anyways, uh, let's see. Yeah. We're talking this week. We got some stuff going on. We got a, actually a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Jill has been driving Mitsubishi products, and she's driving Tacoma right now. We're going to talk about that. We have Ram yeah. telling owners, please don't drive our truck and leave it outside the park it, which is always an interesting <laughs> note to not a maker. Uh, we have a uh, GM China truck for $9,000, which I secretly want to import just to play with. And Stellantis, the drug company. Uh, Ram yeah, brand. Uh, no, that was Ram. Uh, Tesla. Excuse me. I'm the other weird name of stuff these days tesla has decided that the model x which is talking about the model s2 the car model x is going to have a slider touchscreen shifter situation right and so slider touchscreen shifter yeah so uh we're gonna get to that as well um uh, it is very interesting dan is here Dwayne is here shawnee long is here ben is here from ontario canada Hey, Canada. Ram Riders here. Uh, there is also probably some conversation about me thinking about selling my F-150. Did Jill catch the video? No, Jill was down with, with, with was traveling. I, I saw posted, but I didn't, I, I didn't actually watch the video. Okay, so we're going to get Jill's thoughts on this. I will walk her through my thought process on that. But so let's, and then Jill's okay. got some, th some comments from the website. She's got some stuff we've been running over there. So let's get started on this. Let's talk about Stellantis Ram brand, which is just a weird thing. No, 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 stop. Just a minute. We're going to have a, a moment to talk about pronunciation. You keep saying Stellantis. Oh, do I? Stellantis. Stellantis. I've been, I've been drinking for a little while now today. Stellantis. So, um, that's my excuse. And I'm sticking to it. Uh, they're recalling 20,000 heavy duty Ram diesel trucks, and this is not a huge issue, 20,000. But they're globally over an issue that could cause an engine compartment fire. There's actually a photo of a Ford. Super Duty catching fire on a Facebook page, which is pretty shocking to see. Uh, the effective vehicles yeah. include 2021 Ram three quarter ton and one ton pickups, and three one ton 450 and 550 the medium duty chassis cabs equipped with a Cummins 6.7 liter turbo diesel engine. In the U.S., recall covers about 1920 19,200 vehicles, uh, 1695 in Canada, 223 in other markets. So the uh, documents say. The owners may experience an engine compartment failure originating from an electrical short in the intake air heater relay, uh, which could potentially lead to a vehicle fire, whether the ignition is on or off. So they have they have <laughs> asked owners to park their trucks outside in case there is a fire. So, <laughs> yeah. So if they if they're built, you, you always have to love it when they're like, just in case maybe something happens. Park it outside. Right. Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they, not to park their vehicle indoors. So please yeah. park your Ram trucks outside. And they're working on developing a repair. Uh, dealers and customers will be notified starting April 30th. The full <laughs> month. I feel like I would want to know that my vehicle <laughs> was going to catch on fire maybe before that. I, I do agree with that. I, I do think that that may be a uh, situation. So, yeah, it's, it is interesting. Um, yeah, so if you're, if you have a Ram truck during those time periods, uh, definitely park it outside, <laughs> not indoors, uh, definitely not living room, ignore the living room situation outdoors. Right. So, uh, that was the, that was one of the things uh, that we got tweeted at that by Dan, the man who's on our, uh, Twitter and I hadn't seen it yet. And then I looked at some of the articles and literally it said, please don't park this indoors. Please park your truck outside, which I thought was kind of interesting. So I did. I did do that. Um, what else we got for you tonight? Lots of good stuff. Uh, Jill wanted to talk about. Do you want to talk about Jeep Safari stuff? Uh, uh, so 
I'm sure pretty much everybody who's watching this is probably familiar. Jeep does a uh, a thing every year right around Easter, hence Easter Safari, where they roll out uh, a, a couple of vehicles. Some of them are concepts, some of them are production vehicles, and some of them are like retro versions of something that they have done a while ago. So we have a story on our website that uh, talks, it's, it's, the title, the headline is Diesel, Electric, and More more for uh, 2021 Easter Jeep Safari concept vehicles. So, um, you know, the, the primary photo has four vehicles uh, lined up and uh, we're just talking about basically what they've done. And these look really cool. So I, I, I have to say, like, first off, I think the very first time I appeared with Tim on his YouTube channel was when we were talking about the 4xe Jeep. I, and I had a black eye. I don't know if anybody out there remembers that, but yeah, black eye and, and um, I don't want to talk about it, but um, well, so I did not hit Jill. Back to, I'm blaming him anyway. Um, actually, we were all in lockdown and my husband didn't hit me either. Um, I'll blame a dog. Seriously, I'll blame a dog. Um, but so the thing that caught my eye in this was the Magneto. So first off, I mean, come on, Magneto. Yes, 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 yes. Magneto. Yes, um, yes, yes. But, but <laughs> the fact that it is an electric-only Jeep, I, I mean, I think it's coming. It has to come. But the the design is really cool. It's, like, got this cool, like, bright white paint with these interesting blue insets around it. And I don't know. I, I, I think it looks pretty cool. It says the power is supplied from four battery Packs. Ooh, and by the way, I just found a typo in the story. Parks. <laughs> Battery parks. Nice job. Nice uh, job, editor. <laughs> I know. I, I'm blaming the fact that I've, I've been traveling for like 48 hours and my brain isn't functioning. Um, but uh, batteries supplied from four battery packs, not parks, um, combined with a power of a 70 kilowatt hour running 80 volt system. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, I find the whole idea of an electric Jeep pretty interesting. It looks really cool. It's got the blue accents like the 4xe does. I could totally see something like this actually coming into production, especially with the move that we're seeing into electric cars. So I thought that looked really cool. Um, but then you also have the, the Resto mod, which is the throwback from the second generation Jeepster. And it has this beautiful, like burnt orangey brownish paint that looks really cool. And it's only a two seater with like, a, it almost looks like a mini truck bed in the back, completely open air, but that looks really cool. Um, in the interior, it looks like something out of the 1980s that I'm not particularly fond of because... <laughs> The gear shift looks funky, but uh, other than that, the exterior looks really cool. Uh, then you have the Jeep Red Bear, um, and that's going to be the the Gladiator Rubicon concept with the eco diesel engine. So that looks really cool. So we've got some pictures on there. You know, the final thing actually doesn't look terribly interesting to me. I'll be honest. The orange peels um, that looks like something that already exists. It's a two door Jeep. Um, but it's based on, you know, the two-door Wrangler. Um, and, yeah, I don't find that very interesting, so I'm not even going to talk about it. But but we have more information on the website about the, the Jeep Safari concepts. Um, I think also on display at the Safari this year is going to be the, the recently revealed launched production vehicle, the 392. Um, which is the the high performance uh, vehicle V8, from yeah. Jeep with the yeah with the V8 with the Wrangler. Um, but you know that the, I love that Jeep does this. I think it's always interesting. They go out to Moab, Utah, and they do this little um, Jeep owner trail thing, um, and it's kind of a, a party. And you know, frankly, after the last year of lockdown, it's kind of exciting that they're bringing it back and they're doing it. And um, you know, it's just kind of a celebration of life. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they're doing it. And at least they have three cool vehicles that they're bringing. <laughs> three out of four. Um, I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to bring something up because you, you did bring this up. So four by E this week made news because the EPA estimation for electric mileage does not match what Jeep said. It's <laughs> 25 versus 23. So okay. two miles difference on electric range. It turns out physics still wins. 
box on wheels still does not return the same, you know, estimates. So that was interesting you brought that up because the the, the 4xe does not, I mean, it's it's like the F150 hybrid that I have. It's there's no electric driving mode only. It's it's just it doesn't get it. It's not the same idea. So the Magneto is pretty interesting. I I do agree. I have thought about um you guys have sound off in the comments. I have thought about going to Moab. So so Moab to me is eight nine hours. I mean it's a day drive, and so I actually could theoretically go there. And I've been talking to some people that have been been going. My challenge is is that I'm not going to take my hybrid F150 off road <laughs> in Moab. Uh, that's just not going to happen. <laughs> I don't care how many views I'm going to get. I don't care how many millions of subscribers I'll get from that. I'm just not interested in doing that. So, but. That's a question that has come up in my brain, and we'll get to this more in the uh, live stream slash podcast. I do these podcast things later. Um, because when I shop for a new vehicle, I have thought that thing through. Like, I don't go to Moab because they don't have anything to drive in Moab. However, mm. I could theoretically buy something and build it and go to Moab. But let's let's get to that in a little bit. Um, but I, I did I, – I was thinking back, though. Um, can you – since you teased it – how did the black eye happen again? I'm I'm a little mystified, a little little, little weird. I can't remember. A, a, a brain fart because you have CRS. <laughs> do you know what that stands for? Uh, no, I do not. Can't remember SHIT. <laughs> oh, um, yes, yes. CRS. Uh, one of my old bosses was fond of saying he had CRS, and I was just like, okay. Um, but yeah, no. So what was that? That was back in August. I was um unfortunately visiting a friend whose husband had passed away and uh was petting their dog who apparently did not want to like you know I, I petting the dog then they had a second dog come over so I switched my attention from the one dog to the other dog which was like a little bitty thing and um the big I it was it wasn't an Irish wolfhound but it was like a big very large dog did not like the fact that I switched my attention to the little dog and basically like took his head and went bam and I I had like quite the shiner for about a month um it was it was quite funny so if you if you go back and you watch the four by e video I tried to cover it up with makeup I failed miserably <laughs> <laughs> the funny part is I had to do magician's work on th on thumbnails. For I don't know how long, because yeah. I was I was actually grabbing her other eyelid and like copy and pasting it over the existing eyelid and flipping it because <laughs> I had to cover because I was like I don't want somebody to you know it's, it stands out so badly it, I don't want somebody asking me about the black eye the whole time yeah it, it did it did run out uh, there's well, and I I feel like I did the Honda uh, CRV hybrid review with the black eye and I may have worn my sunglasses the entire time. <laughs> Yeah, and that's uh, it, it, trying to hide the black eye. And you know how I feel about sunglasses on camera, and that's the one time I was like, okay, <laughs> right? I was like, I'm not gonna you, argue you that. You do one. that, yeah, because yeah. I. Well, I don't know about you guys it, listening yeah. in, in this or, or watching this. To me, if you wear glasses, like dark glasses on camera, it's what are you trying to hide? And that's always my thing. Like just, just, it just look at me in the eyes. It's, I have a thing. I'm my soul. I'm trying to hide my soul. <laughs> and that's not a Kia. Uh, there was a question about GM still on schedule for new redesign for 2022. Uh, as far as we know, everything is still a go. It's a big question mark why the Tundra is not unveiled. I will tell you, I'm have, playing golf with the uh, director of PR for Toyota and Lexus in a couple weeks. And if it's not unveiled by then, there'll be conversations about that on the course because it's go time. Just make sure there's also beer involved. Oh, there will be plenty. Uh, there, there's going to be there, there is going to be some of that going on because it's like it's like come on. There, there's like at this point, let's let's keep going. Uh, let's see. There was a question about uh, uh, yes, uh, Shauna. We'll get to the truck and we'll get to off roading the truck. Uh, GM launches nine thousand dollar pickup truck in China. It's got fold down bedside, so it's a it's a it's a weird thing. It's a small truck. It's like, it's like what people want the Ford Maverick to be. And the bedsides right. actually fold flat. So you have this wide surface. And I know Jill's looking at the photos right now because oh. I know Jill's behind. Yeah, I am. And my wife saw the photos of this and she was like, oh, I'd use that. I can reach in the bed. The beds, I mean, the bed sides are probably only a foot and a half, two feet tall. And it folds flat. And there's it actually folds hinged. And they actually fold them down. There's a photo of they, them yeah. having like plants in the back of this truck selling them. And you can actually walk up and get the plant. I mean, it, it's it's a pretty interesting concept, idea. 
It's built by a third party that is a GM supplier in China. It's kind of a, a arrangement. Now, it, it has what they've described in the article. Uh, James Gil- Gilboy wrote this night. James is a great guy. Um, he wrote it as it basically has a Harbor Freight engine. If you ever bought some Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight is a cheap knockoff tool company. And they have 99 horsepower. Like, my 62 has more horsepower than this thing has. And it's got rear-wheel drive, five-speed manual, Mm -hmm. right? And it's only sold in in China because, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they sell it in the United States. It's it's interesting. A couple inches taller than the 2021 Chevy Colorado, but about a foot shorter and narrower. It's much narrower. So it basically fit in the back end of a three-quarter ton Chevy, which I have right now, a 16 foot bed. You basically could haul this truck around with that truck. I mean, that's that's the idea of it. And if you've been overseas, which I was blessed to have a trip in Japan a couple years ago, you will realize that trucks of this size actually fit in well over there. They use a lot of um, small trucks like this. I forget the name of that brand. I, was, I saw it all the time over there. But yeah, so and, and it's definitely going to be loud inside the cabin. It, it's cheap. There's nothing, you know, the, the, there's no King Ranch version of this or no Denali version, as I should say. It's not going to happen. And so it is it is interesting. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, James is a is a, is a uh, Generation Y or whatever generation you want to be. He's younger than I am by quite a bit, um, younger than especially Jill. And he's mm-hmm. talking about how it's such a bargain basement price and how he's infatuated by the thing. And, uh, yeah, it, it is interesting. I, I don't know. It's... So I just want to read one line from his sure. story because th- this just totally cracks me up. Um, <laughs> because apparently, you know, it will appeal to younger drivers with their new generation lifestyle of pragmatism plus hedonism. Yeah, yeah. that's Pragmatism that's... plus hedonism. <laughs> That's um, uh, that's yeah. from the drive.com and again I know James and he's a nice guy but it's it's a very and other people other outlets have run the story. Other outlets mm-hmm. have run it but I thought James story was really good and so I thought let's let talk about his. Uh, yeah, he says who cares about acceleration or crash safety when you got three tailgates. <laughs> Which is <laughs> interesting. Interesting thought on that. So it is interesting cuz right now there's a movement towards Ford Maverick, there's talk about Chevy Love idea coming back, Nissan Hardbody, those are all trucks that were like those Small trucks. I mean, that's used to be this country was uh, a bunch of small trucks that became larger and taller for more headroom. So, like, my neighbor is six foot two or whatever he is, and he tells me all the time, he's like, yeah, he goes, I love the headroom of the 2021s. I don't like how tall they are. I can't reach in the bed. And it's, it's legitimate. It's, it's a factor of you make the cab taller, They designers feel like the United States, you have to make the bed higher to match. Versus in Europe they, and, and Asia, they don't do this. They do these tall cabs with short beds. And so you see this all the time. I forget the name of those in Japan. Oh, they used to... I forget. I used to know off the top of my head. But anyways, they, they do a lot of these trucks that have tall cabs and short beds. And uh, we have a friend. I have a friend, actually. I think we have both the same mutual friends. He's in Seattle, and he owns a couple of these trucks. Um, they have that set up. He's always inviting me up there to drive these. And I've actually thought about it. I've actually done the road trip math on this. Because I would just drive up there. And... Uh, yeah, it, 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 they're very interesting. They are the uh, utilitarian truck that people want to have all the time. That, that people say they want to have, but when it comes down to it, people are buying Platinums and Limiteds and Denali's and King Ranches, and it's like, so what do you guys want? I mean, it's, it's such a that's why the truck market is so cool because it's so diverse. Uh, yeah, that that so that launch it, it is interesting. It's it, no, it's not a side by side. Dan says it's not a side by side. It is really um, rather interesting talking about this truck. Um, I don't know. Uh, it is. Jim's here from uh, Newborn, Georgia. Uh, Plaris Ranger. It, it, you could, it, it, So, the GM China truck, yes. You could think of this like a side-by-side in the sense that it's probably the same side. It's, it's like a side-by-side with a bed, and the bed folds out, if that makes sense. But it's also like a, half the price of a side-by-side in, in Chinese dollars or yen or whatever they, you know, the conversion. So, it, that is it, it is an interesting thought it, it sean says we great truck for a golf course yeah a golf course a um, nursery right a very much a fleet driven truck could make make sense with that i just don't know how much profit they can get from that how much they would make sense building that in a u.s factory with 
Oh, well, sorry. There's union concerns. There's payroll. There's a lot of other um, issues in the United States that makes building a truck like this cost prohibitive. Cost prohibitive. My big word today. Uh, we're going to get into my truck here in a little bit. Um, uh, I'm going to discuss more about the truck. Uh, I want to. I want to. Uh, Jill, do you have anything else before I get the Tesla Model X? Uh, well, I mean, just we should talk about why I was traveling this week. Yes, so, yes, please. Uh, I was um, down in Miami, actually, Bienvenido a Miami, um, driving the Mitsubishi Outlander and the so completely all new Outlander, uh, 22 model year, and the uh, also 2022 model year, but refreshed. So this is uh, the first press preview I've been to in 2021. Um, and I want to say that we all had to be COVID tested before we attended and we did the PCR testing. So it wasn't the rapid antigen test. We actually had to go in and do the long test mm. before we even got on the plane. It's not the China, and then once we landed, China butt test at all. No, they do the hmm? anal swab. No, all right. yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Just right. like up, up on my brain. Um, and then once we arrived, we had to do the um, rapid antigen test. So we had to do two COVID test to, tests before we were allowed to like even see anybody else or check into the hotel. So um, I felt reasonably secure and safe with the situation. And they broke us up into small groups. We didn't drive with anybody, so which meant that I got um, plenty of time driving by myself in both vehicles. And driving impressions are going to be embargoed until April 6th. But I can tell you um, the Eclipse Cross is significantly refreshed. The exterior of the vehicle is radically dr different. The, the front end of the vehicle, like the, the hood, all, all new. Um, the crossbar in the back, gone. So it becomes a little bit more normal. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's Yeah, that crossbar it, was weird. It looks weird. a little less quirky. Yeah. It was weird, but so it looks a little less quirky. They've added some technology inside, and um, I mean, it's it's a twenty four thousand dollar vehicle, so you can't expect um, luxury finishes and you know the the you know swirling graphics at the start. But um, I I can't tell you what I think, but I'll just say more coming soon. I've been posting some videos on TikTok. And I've got some photos on Instagram. And then the Outlander is based on the 2021 Nissan Rogue platform. But the interesting th thing there is that um, it really doesn't share any sheet metal with the Rogue. So the infotainment system, the gear shift, the engine, and the platform. So four things are pretty much shared. But then everything else is different. So... Uh, I just finished doing my written review of the Nissan Rogue, and I know that the video is going live Friday. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, I loved the Nissan Rogue. I had a hard time finding anything wrong with it. And you can extrapolate what you would like from that as to how I feel about the Mitsubishi Outlander. But so two, two new vehicles from Mitsubishi that I think are refreshing. Um, and unexpected. So before we get too far, uh, can you explain what a press preview is? I, I don't know if everybody in the audience understands what that is. Yeah. So, I mean, depending on, uh, the automaker, it, well, okay. So way back when, before, you know, in the pre COVID era, uh, what automakers would do is they would have a new vehicle coming out and they would pick a city and they would bring in waves of journalists and you could have 20 to 50 journalists on every wave of, of the program just to cycle through this vehicle. And you had a drive partner and you would spend a day driving the vehicle, um, curated roads, uh, curated experience, very targeted and focused where the automaker is providing you an experience that they think somebody who would own this car would have. And, and but it's you get access to the engineers, you get access to the product planners, you get access to um, just like the, the, the very nitty gritty details of people who are planning on the vehicle. So people who are doing the audio, people who are doing the infotainment system. So you have very good access to people who will answer your questions. Um, in the COVID era, they've kind of put the kibosh on many of these programs. So um, in 2020, 
at the end, I did a press preview for the um, Hyundai Elantra and the Hyundai Sonata, um, the M-Line version. And then um, I did a preview for the Hyundai BRZ. Um, but that was it. Like that, that was like the, the first press previews that were really available um, in COVID times. And so then for this year, uh, automakers are trying to figure out how to bring these things back. And the interim solution has been, okay, here's this two hour Zoom meeting that you have to listen to. Then we will <laughs> drop the vehicle off at your house and you have 24 hours to drive it. And then, um, you know, so the Lincoln Nautilus review that I did was based on one of those press preview, press previews that was like an individual bringing it to your house kind of thing. But in the pre-COVID times, it was a, a big event. You go to a location, you get 24 hours with the car on their terms, not yours. And um, then you travel home. Yeah. So. And the idea here is, is that they launch the vehicle. They get a bunch of press, press all drops same time, and then it hits mm -hmm. dealer lots. And then before we get dealer lots as a consumer, you have all these articles to look back on and first drive reviews. And so from mm -hmm. our standpoint, we do first drive articles on it. And then we do a typical review, seven day review. So that's that's how the system yeah. works. And so you have vehicles like, it, this really creates a problem, and, and I'll give you guys practical terms here, uh, Bronco. If you've heard in the news about the Bronco, you haven't heard people drive it. That's a big problem for, for Ford. Uh, Jeep Wrangler 4 by e have been canceled twice in this program. Uh, that's coming on dealership lots, but people don't know about it because it's not in the news. And that's a big mm -hmm. issue for Jeep, right? So it's like it's hard to create the excitement around a, a, a vehicle and get people interested in checking it out when there's no press. It's like... You know, the press these days, media is always a, a buzzword for bad things, whatever. But there's also a good and bad. I mean, they need us and we need them. We need them to create con – we need new content and fresh content. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they need us to create a buzz to create this lift. And so usually there's embargo dates, which you talk about April 6th. And this is a date mm -hmm. that all of these articles go live. And then it's funny because you'll get people that talk about um, these – I'll get things in comments that are like, oh, the Bronco embargo dropped this morning because they'll see seven videos <laughs> go live, you know, right, and right. like 20 articles go live at the same point because, it's, you know, we don't we don't always – we follow embargo timelines. We're not going to break embargo. We're not going to break a trust. But we um, – I'm often encouraging to ignore the embargo time, just let our make, run our videos when they're going to run because – it's just the way media works, but yeah, there's there's a lot of that's how the that's how the business works. And without COVID, without auto shows, all that kind of stuff, we've been kind of hamstrung on what we can do. So it's exciting to have Jill do some programs. You're doing uh, Hyundai this week. You have Mazda in May. Was it May? Yeah. So I did Mitsubishi this week. Then I have Hyundai coming up in April. Okay. I yeah Mitsubishi. Okay. So I was I was I thought it was. Oh. Yeah. And, and, M &M. and one other thing that I want to say about these press previews, everybody's like, so does the automaker pay for you to come in and do that? And the answer is yes, they do. Um, and they're like, well, then do you just say only positive things about it? And I'm like, no. Um, now, there are going to be some people out there who feel obligated and beholden to only say happy, positive things about a vehicle um, that they, they do a first drive of. But I and, and I don't know what Tim's philosophy is, but my personal philosophy is no matter how much I like a vehicle, you know, especially when I'm doing my written review, you know, maybe I have 10 things that I love about it. I have to find at least one thing that I don't like. Um, and, and on the flip side, if, the, you know, I really hate a vehicle and there's 10 things I hate about it, I try to find one positive thing that I like about it. But um, I, I try to be as objective as I can when I go to these programs because I know people are looking at this because they're planning on buying the car. So is there something that bothers me about it that might bother somebody else? I try to call that out. So I, I personally try to be very objective when I'm driving any vehicle to let people know uh, what they might like and not like. And and you went to the Ram TRX preview mm -hmm. last year. That was that was a first drive program. Yeah, that was. That and was you my... had some negative things to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that was my only uh, first drive after like 
things got shut down like in February. I think it was in February, March or something like that. And then that was my first drive. I, I, I'm with Jill. I, I think if we don't point out the flaws or point out things that are concerning to us, we're just an extension of the PR department. And that's just not okay. Um, and so I'm always a proponent of let it fly uh, and let it let put information out there. Um, because it's like people make their own conclusions on what they think is important, what's not important. But let's put it out there. You know, it's like, it's like the whole rust conversation. You know, whether or not you thought I was whining or not whining, it the, the reality of things is it created a conversation. People talked about it, and right. and that's at the end of the day, as a journalist and as a writer and and all the stuff I do. But you really just want people to have a good debate about your topic. That's what you really that's what you really want to have happen. And so if people are reading it and are getting fired up. That's a bonus. That that's a win win for for what's going on. Um, I want to get to one more thing. We're going to talk about the Ford um, issue so, in a minute. Before oh. you leave that, I have one more thing to say. Yeah, please. I bumped into a friend of the channel while I was uh, in Miami looking at the Mitsubishi Outlander. I bumped into Tommy Micah hmm. from TFL, and he said that he was very thrown off by the fact that we changed the day of the podcast because he always walks the dog on Tuesday nights and was listening to our podcast while he was walking, you know, walking the dog. And it, that was how he would know that he was done walking the dog. And he was like, and that Tuesday that you changed it, he's like, I was completely thrown off. and I didn't know what to do at the time. And uh, I just, he's like, you really threw me off there. He's like, but now I got it Wednesdays. I'll be listening to you on Wednesdays. So I, I you know, I know, uh, Tommy and Roman were heading home tonight or today from Miami. So I don't know if uh, Tommy is out walking his dog listening to us right now. But if he is, hi and thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank <laughs> it you. It was really good to see you in person. I, I, I do enjoy Tommy's company. He's a, a breath of fresh air in industry. He's a younger guy. And his thoughts on things are really interesting to me. And I enjoy talking to him. He's a good guy. He's really smart, too. Uh, really, uh, really a bright kid. And so... Thanks, Tommy, for, for, for listening to the channel and, and being a friend of the channel. I mean, he's got so much stuff going on. I'm surprised he has time. Holy cow. Uh, Dave gave us 10 bucks. Thanks, Dave. Dog, so. Yes, they're walking the dog. <laughs> Thanks, Dave, for 10 bucks. All Train Nation. He's doing some fun stuff over the Bronco. We always tease him a little bit about all the Bronco coverage he's doing. Um, yeah, there's there's some stuff. I, I saw some stuff. Ram Riders talking about Barrett Jackson. There was I saw um, Andre was down at Bear Jackson doing some stuff with the uh, first edition of the Hummer, and I was kind of curious about that. Uh, that's a question. It's interesting. Uh, Jill and I are uh, programming note. Programming note. Uh, Jill and I are going to be in uh, Dallas in a couple weeks. We are doing yeah. a variety of things. Um, I I didn't get to tell you this is that uh, there is a Chevy Tahoe diesel we will be driving in Dallas. I the Jeep Cherokee unfortunately was double booked and so we won't be driving that and so Jill flies in Sunday and then I will uh, meet her at the hotel and we will check out the, the Tahoe diesel and then we will drive it on Tuesday in the airport I'm hoping that we can find time somehow to do a combo review of that um, we will see she may miss her flight anyways we are uh, working <laughs> there is no missing of the flight <laughs> We're going to have to do it on Sunday, so plan ahead. <laughs> yeah, so I will pick Jill up. Uh, I will meet her at the airport. I will be playing golf that day. I don't think be able to get to her. But, yeah, so Jill and I will be on, on location uh, actually doing stuff together, so it would be fun. I know you guys enjoyed the Tundra review we did combo-wise, and so I'm hoping we can recreate the magic of that happening. Speaking of magic, the Tesla Model X has a new screen on the, on the infotainment screen. It's how you shift the car. Yes. It, it, so infotainment screen, the, the, the big Tesla screen, has a separate little uh, a box. And in the box, you click what do you want to do with the car. You want to park it or you want to, you want to put it in park. You want to put it in drive. What do you want to do with the vehicle? Jill, because things aren't confusing enough with the Tesla. Right. And, and, and putting it on a screen. I, I don't know. I, I have all these concerns about things on the screen, like crashing and going blank. And Dan Edmonds, a friend of the channel who has his own channel, really good channel, suspension stuff. He said, look, I, I my, I've had Tesla's go screen blank all the time. <laughs> He's like, so a screen goes blank, you're driving, what happens? Yeah, you're, you're in trouble. <laughs> uh, no, well, you know, it's it, so, uh, I'm, I'm going to go back to the Mitsubishi again for a moment because they added knobs back. 
because they used to have like buttons that you pushed or whatever to do like the tuning yeah for your your stations yeah they put knobs back in and they did that for a reason they did that for a reason because people don't like dealing with buttons or screen like honda they added the volume knob back after they had the stupid slider that they used for um the volume I, I don't know, but, the, you know, the Tesla Roddy are going to love this, you know, because it's Tesla. Right. It's something new, something unique, something different. I don't, I just don't understand why is, why are we, why do we have to change up the vehicle so much? Why is there this drive to make things unique? Why is this drive to say, oh, I'm going to make my, not, I'm not going to pull the button like Tahoe has done to shift gears. I'm going to make it like electronic on a screen because that's cooler. Like, right. I'm mystified. Like, what happens if you if you break down, right? So you, you break down in the road, and you have to get towed, but the battery is out. You can't start the screen up, and you can't put it in neutral to get towed. I don't. Yeah, uh, Elliot says It'll people feel safe, right? Well, no, people. Elliot says people only complain about buttons and knobs unless it's a Tesla, and I agree. If it's if it's a Tesla, it's fine. If it's not a Tesla. And they're, oh, you, you know, Tesla does this better. Tesla does this better. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, right. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, if Tesla did it, then it must be okay. Uh, Jim Tudor says, plenty of knobs on my 16 Tundra. Nice review. You both did it in 21. Thank you, Jim. Um, we had fun in that 21 Tundra. It, it, so I got to tell the story. So I had met Jill's family there in Florida. And I picked her up, which was mm-hmm. just as a colleague thing, not a weird thing anyways i picked her up and i said we're gonna do this we're gonna do this tundra review in 20 minutes and her sister goes you cannot do a tundra review and video in 20 minutes and jill says no we can tim's good on camera it's 20 minutes and i think it was like 18 minutes and i 50 do it seconds. it's like three hours he does it it's 20 minutes <laughs> <laughs> right i think it was 18 minutes 18 minutes and we were done and then oh we had to we had to we had to back up we forgot thumbnail but we had done the entire right. video in that, you know, and I'm like, it's done. It's, it's, it's what it is, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. I'm telling you. So I'm hoping that the Mitsubishi reviews are kind of modeled after that. I did have to stop and start, but it started a couple of times there with the Outlander. There's a very actually funny interlude that you may or may not include, um, where I almost got locked out of the car while it was running. <laughs> I, I will say this. Um, if you haven't seen Jill's videos, you should. Jill has gotten better and better and better. <laughs> she's she's getting a, she's getting better, and I'm. I, I, so I, I will say this. I took you know, is anybody having a business on your own? You always take a, a leap of faith when you hire somebody new, and it's always a leap of faith with Jill and doing reviews. But you know, I know that to make the channel bigger, I need Jill. I mean, I just do. I I need her uh, experience, her expertise. I need a different voice in a channel, and she has done a great job of continually trying to get better. She's still got a lot of things to say, and we're getting better about that. But uh, I always have a lot to say. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so so, so uh, the, gone are the days I get three hours of video for a 20-minute video. So we've gotten better about that. But it, it is fun, and I'm really happy she's on the channel. So I'm hoping you guys have noticed that over time, that it's gotten better and better and better. And I think we're getting, we're getting better. I think overall, I agree. Um... All right, that was it for that. That was it for that. Uh, there was uh, a question that came up. Uh, let's see. So Tuffy McTufferson. <laughs> I love it. Tuffy McCuff- McTufferson just asked a question. When do you think we expect 2022 Frontier? You know what? I haven't even seen a 21 Frontier yet. Or 21, no. 21, did they 22 refresh? Is 22 yeah. the, the yeah, new? Yeah, they've... 22 is yeah, new, right? Dead. Yeah, yeah. They just, um, so when they did the Pathfinder, they did the Frontier. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out model years. Any, it's 2022. Okay. Um, I think it's 2022 Pathfinder and Frontier. Um, golly, as I'm saying that, I'm like, now I need to Google that. I know. Um, to verify. The, the COVID <laughs> brain. The years get, the it. years just get, if you could say all new, it'd be great. Cause the years just get all like put together. Yeah, well, I'm still in 2019, so um, oh, no. 2020 didn't exist. <laughs> uh, but 2022, yeah. Um, and and the the name of the the article on our website is 
2022 Nissan Frontier. Damn, this looks good. You're right, and that was Jill. So, She's giving her props. She, yeah. Um, so yeah, so twenty so mid summer. allowed me to use that word. Uh, usually stuff. Here's how things work, folks. Usually stuff gets unveiled in the first quarter of the year, so January, February, March, mm-hmm. and gets uh, first media drives July, August, and then it's on sale late third quarter, early fourth quarter. It's kind of the time frame how things work out. That's that's what's going on. Um, <laughs> Nabil. Nabil emailed me, and uh, I, I don't know if I'm saying it right. You think it's Nabil? I don't know. Um, yeah, so I, I'm... I'm just uh, going to let you mess that one up. I know. I'm sorry. Nebraska here. So Tim said... He did. We've been emailing. He got some information from a new Tundra from Insiders. So he wants me to bring it up. I will bring it up, Nabil, just for you. Just for you. Um, about this. There's conversation about the fact that they're going to have a 5-liter V8 or 5.7 liter V8 and a twin turbo hybrid. You can offer both, which I think is uh, obvious. Uh, people keep saying the V8 is dead in the Tundra, and I don't understand that because every automaker, Chevy, Ram, Ford, Nissan, all offer a V8 engine still, and it's still one of their top sellers. So people are like, oh, the Tundra's not gonna have V8 anymore. And I'm like, that's a load of bull. Because how do you get rid of the top selling truck, a top selling engine choice, this early now, if V8s were on their way out, like regular caps had been, had been on the V8 uh, uh, going on the out, if natural aspirated uh, V6s, which Chevy just killed last of theirs, that was kind of on the way out. I all right, I'm fine with that, but V8s are not on the way out. <laughs> they're, they're not dead yet. People still like V8s. Ford still builds a V8, even though they offer like two or three different versions of the EcoBoost, because the people still buy the V8. So this whole nonsense about Toyota killing the V8. Is frankly just nonsense. I, I've talked. I mean, the chief engineer of the Toyota Tundra runs a hay farm in Michigan on his side. I've talked to him. I've been to his house. I've talked to him over coffee, or drinks in his house, whatever we had. I've I've been in his dining room table. The man likes a V8 engine. <laughs> it's it's gonna happen. Yes, they will offer a hybrid version. They will offer a hybrid uh, twin turbo V6 engine because the folks in Japan demand that he does something about the V8 fuel economy and the pollution. So he's going to offer it. He's likely going to offer it. But Toyota is not killing a V8. That, that's a load of bull. And so I just, I yeah, I, I think it's just mm, nonsense. Uh, Fooey. So do we want to place bets on that? We can place bets on that, but it is not. I, I just, I think it's fully. And, and I would say this, if... Let's get let's get to this. So I I have I talked this week, uh, yesterday to the video about whether or not I should sell my F one hundred and fifty, and and yep. and I've had a lot of comments on this. I didn't think it was that big of a video, but all of a sudden it blew apart. People asked, you know, I asked for people's feedback, and boy, I did hear it. I got lots of feedback. <laughs> um, but but understand this is that a couple things. So let, let me break this down for Jill. The too long didn't read. Um, I have had this truck for three months i have done city fuel economy driving i've done uh long distance driving i've towed a camper for 50 miles i have done uh, the rust videos i've done my 30 days ownership i've done comparisons of chevy uh trucks i've done comparisons with toyota tundra trucks i've done comparisons with uh, what i've done nissan trucks right and so i really was sitting i was talking to my cousin about it uh he was gonna buy a truck he stopped at the house he's a ford fan he's owned ford his entire life I was talking about, I was like, you know, I'm going to sell this thing in the fall. And he goes, really, what's the price going to be? You know, I'm curious about buying it. He's not a hybrid guy. He does. He wouldn't care about this truck at all. But I, I was, I, I got thinking afterwards and he left. I was like, you know, why do I need to wait till the fall? What do I have left? And I didn't mean this negatively. And any people take this video a bunch of ways. But as a, as a, as a journalist, I want to keep this truck for 20 years and do videos. As a publisher of the channel, as I am now my new role, um, I get things in broad terms. What do I have left to cover on this F-150? So I need to do overnight camping and run the AC all night long. I need to do that to see how much fuel I use. That's the test I need to do. I need to compare, I'd love to compare it to a Ram truck, if I can get a Ram truck, but I've, I've checked Ram Media Fleets and they're only offering the TRX these days because that's their big push. Mm. Um, I need to do an oil change and do an oil analysis comparison, what's in the oil, that kind of stuff. So I, I was thinking about this. I'm like, well, let's go down to two that I really can do. I can do 
camping overnight and run the AC and an oil oil change. Well, an oil change video is what a day, and then I send it off to analysis and get the analysis report back and read the analysis report on the camera. So I mean, I, I have like what a, not even day, uh, a couple hours, and then if I wanted to go do AC, I could legitimately drive down to like Albuquerque or like. Santa Fe, New Mexico, or like some parts of Texas right now, I could rent a camper, I could sleep in the camper overnight, and I could do my AC test. So, I mean, I those two videos are easy to do. And right now, what got me thinking about it too is, is Jill and I have been running stories, is the semi, semiconductor shortage is so big right now, and supply is so constrained, from a business standpoint, I'm like, well, I should just sell it because people can't find these trucks. And I don't really need it. I don't really need the hybrid and the, the 7.2. So I, I, it is an interesting question it, from that standpoint. I have a question for you. Yes. So if you sell the vehicle and you make money off of it, so you sell it for more than what you bought it, what are the business ramifications for that? That has come up in some of the comments. And so what I priced at was 56000 and I bought it at 57000 mm -hmm. So, I mean, I... I I think the payoff is like 53 or something like that. So, and I have two guys now on email that are curious that want to buy it at 56. And I think that the power on board is undervalued. I think from the, from, I just think it's undervalued from KBB and Edmonds. So I'm not going to make a pile of money, but I can make some money. If I do show a profit on the asset, there is part of the IRS tax code that have to pay money on the income, which makes sense, right? So, I mean, we have the, if you make money off the asset, you pay pay money on it. So, I mean, but I, I still would lose a little bit, I think, on paper, but it, it, we're talking a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks either way. So, I mean, the taxes are not gonna be that much. And then I would definitely buy another truck. I would buy something else, right? I think in the fall, I would buy something else. So this is where I'm at currently. Um, I would buy something else, and then the, that depreciation would impact my taxes, business standpoint, so I'd be fine. Because I, I always plan on selling this truck in the fall. I mean, it, it, here's the thing that people right. understand with the business, is that I can't do a 2021 F-150 versus a 2026 Chevy Silverado. Nobody's going to watch that, right? I, I can't do a 2021 versus 2023, 24, 25. I can kind of do 2022s a little bit. But here's the thing, I can't depreciate what I need to in the same calendar year, so I really need to, I need to switch over. This channel is about reviews and comparisons, and so it's got to be the latest product, right? So, I mean, I, I got to have the 2022s, and there's a Tundra coming out, and there's going to be a new uh, Silverado and GMC something going to come out, refresh probably. And so I have some choices coming this fall, but I'm like, I have to have something different because that's what makes the channel great is that you keep doing new videos, fresh content. And so it's going away anyways. I've had people like say, you should buy the three liter diesel and then do a long-term review. And I'm like, I'll never do a long-term review. That makes no business sense to make a long-term review. I can depreciate the vehicle over five years, but who cares? Because in five years time, I have one video coming out from that. That doesn't make any sense. And then from my standpoint, I, don't, I know about Jill's standpoint, I don't drive a vehicle that often. Like my truck, now I have... I have emails from both press fleets. I'm going to have vehicles in my driveway for the next four to six to eight weeks. That means F-150 sits in the driveway for eight weeks. Well, I mean, that's going to be into May. So why not just do something now? So it's created some interesting questions. I'm not like, here's the thing. As a typical truck buyer, what I'm doing is absolutely insane. It's absolutely insane. You should never buy a vehicle this way. You should never buy a vehicle the way I'm doing it. It makes no sense. But from a from a business standpoint, from what I'm doing from taxes and what I'm doing from the channel content, I've already got, I would imagine, I need to check it out, but I've I probably already got 15 videos on the F-150 already. On comparisons I've done and drive, I mean, I've already got so many. So I'm like, I've already made, I, I would guess right now, I've already made two, three, four, five thousand, you know, dollars on this truck. Just some videos. And those videos live infinitely. So, I mean, I can make money today plus long term. So, uh, business-wise, it's been an amazing purchase. It's a, absolutely the best thing I possibly could do. 
bar none. But now it creates the question of, if I only have two video ideas left, why not just get my butt on the road, take a, take a sleeping bag, do the overnight camping thing, and then do the oil change and be done with it? I love having a truck. People people take this, the, the, when I post a video, people are like, well, obviously you don't love it if you're going to sell it after three months. <laughs> I'm like, I love the truck. I love having a truck. I, I have, actually, this is now my, one, my fourth truck I own currently. Yes, I own four trucks. It's a weird thing. But I currently own four what? trucks, and I love driving trucks. And so, yeah, I mean, it's my passion. But I don't it's, – it's a weird thing. Like, do I really need to have that truck four that trucks? much longer? <laughs> do you really need four trucks? No, I do not. It, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, my husband and I have one car. I will tell you, it's, it's – um, there's all these questions about stuff in that, um, what should I do? So um, let's say, let's I, theoretically, I have people emailing me all the time on this truck, buying it. Let's say this guy, I think he's in Arizona, buys this truck. I told him, I said, if you buy this truck in Arizona, I will drive it to you. I will stay tonight in a campground and do my video and then deliver it to you and I'll catch a plane and fly back. Right? Because it doesn't matter to me. I'll just, I'll sell it to him. I'll take a cashier's check to the bank, make sure the check clears, and then get in a plane and fly home big thing right and and there was questions about like what do i buy and this is this is i gotta tell you guys something that um i have a 62 c10 outside swede and i need to get sweden new powertrain he's got a, a 283 with a four in the floor which only means three gears and i really would love to have a new uh 350 in it with an automatic or something like that i know i know manual fans i get it but you, you this is me going i know i know but my left knee there's 13 shifts between here and the golf course 13. i'm not oh, a, I, I know but I, I i don't like driving after a while i don't like driving after a while i would love to have something more comfortable to drive but i, I have thought about where does this channel go so current so this is the weird thought part and and this is something that jill and i will argue about all the time is that um this is a weird thing so the so TFL does uh, uh, classics and bike and now and talk and truck and car, right? They have tons of channels. Um, I, I don't have the capacity for that. I don't want to create another channel so of interest. So we have some older truck videos in this channel. And I like that because I'm fine with that. The, the flavor, right? A little flavor. So I, I, and then I also have a thing where I don't have a current rig that I can take to Moab. So jeep safari i don't have to make take out there so i had this dream of mine owning a 45 like cab over ford or chevy with a flatbed and throw like some modified chevy c10 or a jeep wrangler or something with big tires on it hop it on the back and drive this thing to moab i have these thoughts in my head and the the channel is growing at the point that i could actually do that uh It'd be kind of fun. I could actually drive with Jill. We could go to that um, uh, Cliffs Insane Park and have fun with these these things. I don't know. I mean, TFL is is definitely done a great job off road. Their off road channel. They've done a great job with that. I don't know how much off road I want to get into because uh, it creates there's lots of questions about drone footage and video angles and build not bought. There's, Boy, is that like stepping in a <laughs> a big issue? But there, there is there's thoughts like that. So there's thoughts that we cover the newest things, and then we don't. Uh, uh, TFL now says these are things you need, Tim. So Tommy's Tommy's walking his dog. Uh, the, the, no, I mean the, the TFL has done a great job, and I don't know that I want to go through the. Uh, they have done um a, a, I'm giving props to this. A great job going to this road. It's tough, as Tommy will tell you. TFL Classics is tough. I mean. TFL off road is tough. It's hard to get a new channel like this because that's a whole different like realm. It's a whole different realm of things, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I just have these thoughts in my head like, as the channel keeps growing, as things keep happening, do I go buy a toy? <laughs> uh, Jim Tudor, how many drinks does it require to have these thoughts? You know, I just have an empty bottle here. <laughs> I'm not sure what's up, what's up with that. The, the whiskey is gone. Yeah, I I, I don't want to. I don't want to know. <laughs> but no, I mean, th 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 things things like this go through my head all the time because I watch what the people are doing. I mean, uh, like I said, TFL's doing a great job. There's different off-road channels out there that have done a great job. 
how much do you go down that road? How much do you do the off-road road? Um, but for me, it's a different aspect. Like I would, I'd love a cab. If you have not, and I will make Jill do this. If you have not Google searched a, a 45, 46 cab over engine with a flatbed on the back, it's a glorious machine. It's a glorious machine. I would buy this thing all day long and I would get some crazy like uh, a bowler hat and I would drive this thing to Jill's house with some cool like the shorts and shirt and stuff. She would just kill me. But I, I would I would do this thing and I would I would just, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so, so Tommy says, thanks buddy. I want to race our 65 Ford against your Chevy C10. My C10 does zero to 60 in about a month and a half. So, I mean, <laughs> it's 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 like a hundred and some horsepower at the crank. It's not fast at all. Uh, Classic Thing Channels, it's a total money pit. Yeah. So, I mean, it, TFO Classics, they've done a great job. They've reinvented the channel about, when did you, Tommy, Tom, when did you buy that uh, Tacoma? You, was Tacoma you started doing a lot with that stuff? You did. You, you should, you, you did a lot of that stuff with it. And uh, it's been, a, it's, some things hit, some things don't over that channel. It's It's just... It's so hard from a uh, from a CEO, SEO standpoint to get things to work over the channel. I know it is. I just from the background, from my aspect looking at the channel, it's just it's terrible. Uh, but I have thought about this stuff. I, I actually was looking at uh, somebody said, "Why don't you do a resto mod on Swede?" And I was looking at a three liter diesel. So people people keep saying, "Tim, you need to buy the GM GM three liter diesel, the Chevy or GMC three liter diesel, right truck." And do a long-term review, which I will never do. Another long-term review, it won't happen. But I did think, like, what if I put a diesel in Swede, a three-liter diesel in Swede, and do a long-term with that? Because I'm going to have Swede the rest of my life. I will be in my grave, and Swede will be parking outside. That's what's going to happen. I love that truck. I will keep the truck forever. You're going to be buried in the truck, I no. think, maybe? No, because Cody has told, my son Cody has told me that he's getting the truck next. Oh, okay. He has claimed it. He said, that's okay. my truck, Dad. So I we we've done that. So I, I I yeah I just I thought about I thought about Tuffy says put a Cummins in it. You can buy the two point eight uh, repower Cummins. And I was online looking at this repower Cummins. Cummins and a Chevy. I don't know. So there's a lot of these thoughts in my head. So this is what's going. This is this, my I was driving my friend today, uh, doing a uh, fuel economy test with the the twenty twenty one. Silverado 2500. It was a really boring test, but we were talking and he was looking at me and he's like, the things that go through your head. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I have a lot of time in the winter. Um, but anyways, I just was thinking about like, what could I do? What would be different? I, I don't know. No, GM does not do, Mr. Sparks says, GM does not do the diesel crate motor. They don't do it. So I'd have to find, uh, and I could do this. I could find a, a, a wrecked, uh, uh, Serato or Sierra with two liter diesel in it and buy the engine out of it. That does happen. That you can do that. Um, but then there's a, there's questions about getting it tuned. And uh, James says uh, you started a golf cart golf cart channel. I am actually buying a golf cart. Um, by the way, we'll have my logo on it. There's questions about whether I'm going to write that off an advertising budget. I don't know. I thought about lifting it too. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It, I just these are thoughts in my head. Like, and I know Jill shaking her head, but so what do you do? Like, as as a as a publisher of the channel, um, I'm having a ton of fun. Uh, the channel is making a, t a lot of money, which is it, it, insane to me. I can talk to you on camera and still make money. That th this is all bizarre. This whole thing is bizarre. Huh. Like how we can get paid and do this is bizarre to me. And then it's like, well, once I pay my debt off, which is what my focus on, pay my debt off. Once my debt is paid off, like, and and I don't have any toys besides Swede's kind of a toy. But what do I do? Do and I looked at sixty. Dave. I, I know. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> Save money. Do I need to give you my Dave Ramsey no. talk again? No. Okay. Well, we'll bring you know Motoman TV on. He can give you the Dave Ramsey talk if you like. <laughs> Tommy says they started the classics with 89 F-150, F-350 a year ago. Our Ford versus your Chevy versus Jill on a mountain bike. <laughs> or me running, maybe. I or you know. running. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll see what yeah. is faster. I have, a, I have thoughts in the new garage. There's a thought in the new garage, John. I, uh, yeah, I, I just, huh. I don't know. It, I, I don't, the thing is, like, I don't have any toys. And Swede, I enjoy driving him, and I need to do some tough of the lights. And I need, I need to do a new 
engine him for sure. He's just too slow. So I have thoughts about doing that. And then what do I do beyond that? Because I really do. Here's the thing. So, so Tommy and the TFL crew has done a great job going to Moab. And everybody's gone to Moab. The thing that I have, they don't have, is that the Badlands, South Dakota, is like oh, yeah. two hours from me. And the Badlands mm-hmm. is pretty damn cool. And so I get a Bronco. I'm eating a Bronco Sport um, in a few weeks, whatever the schedule looks like. And my plan is to go to Badlands because that's an area of the country that isn't so. Maybe you'll have a Badlands model. I could. Yeah, that's not so like overdone. Uh, I, I hate to say it about Moab, but I've talked to some people that I know that go there, and they don't like going there because it's so many people go there, and it's such a big attraction. Yada yada. So I thought about going to Moab, uh, not Moab, but the Badlands in South Dakota because it is. It's like two hours from me, and it'd be something unique. Um, I have not spent that much time. I've, I've camped around the Badlands. Uh, we've been near the area. I've hiked different portions of it. Yes, my fat ass has hiked different portions of it. Um, I have been around that area, but I have not like really traversed the, mark, the, the land. And I will tell you, there's a Rapid City off-roading club that's just what, two hours, two, two and a half hours north of me. Maybe it's three. Three, three, both ways. And uh, Rapid City area is really beautiful. And I have gone uh, snow off-roading with the club outside of um, – they're in Wyoming. Uh, offside of Laramie. There's Laramie Off-Road Club. They do snow blasting, or what they call it. They basically – they plow snow trails in the old forest trails outside of Elk Mountain. And that – that uh, – I unfortunately sold the story to – um, a magazine that didn't run it, but the video I had from that event, I would just go. I need to do it again. They're friends. I friends on Facebook with those guys. Um, they do a great job with that stuff. If you've never seen like cutting a snow trail with sixty five Bronco lifted with a, a high output engine in it, like <laughs> it's and they do what is, they have Atlas transmission. They can really dial in the gears. It's a good time. It's a lot of fun. So I, I mean, I have these thoughts about doing that kind of stuff, but. Again, I don't want to compete with TFL. They, they've done a great job on that. So I just, I think a, other unique places I can go that's not competing with them, but showing a different part of lifestyle. That's kind of where I'm at with that. Yeah, so Jill's like, I'm out of wine, and it's been an hour, Tim. What the hell are you keeping I, me I'm actually for? not out of wine. I still have a little bit oh, left. I you. just decided to switch to water, but you know. So uh, let me ask you this, Jill. Um, you've mm-hmm. heard my whole tirade here for the next, last 20 minutes. Um, you have you have heard about my discussions with the F one fifty whether I should keep it or sell it. What do you think? So I have to say, there's definitely a part of me that's like, you know, some of the value of owning a vehicle is going through the pain of owning the vehicle. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you're not going to get the pain of owning a vehicle in three months, six months, a year. And so I can see where people are like, oh, I would love to see you do a long-term ownership because, you know, things don't, I mean, God willing, things don't break in the first year. And if they do, I mean, that in itself is a story. Um, So, I mean, there's certainly a part of me that can see keeping it a little bit longer than three or six months. It's more than just the, oh, what great thing can I do with this vehicle? Let me power my house because my power went out. Um, which, but, by the way, I've had people I, ask me about that, that video. Did you watch the video? I did. It, that, I did. My mother watched that video. That was pretty crazy. She was very impressed, by the way. So, um, but, but you know, I mean, and it, it's more than just that. You know, it's when do things start to go bad? When do things start to break? When do you hear squeaks and rattles? When do you... And, and so, I mean, I can kind of see the value of keeping a vehicle a little bit longer, but the problem is, um, are you going to drive it enough to get the actual mileage out of it to go through the normal things that an owner would go through in that time period? And the, the answer is probably no. Yeah. So, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I could, I could go either way because I see the value of having a vehicle longer term. But I also see the point of, okay, on to the next one. You know, what's next? Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm i still voting for the Tundra, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> the, the, so I, I'm uh, – that Tundra versus Silverado is going to be an ongoing – oh, it's going to be tough. 
It's going to be... I will say this, okay, though. Silverado that maybe gets a couple new interior things, blah, 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 whatever. Tom, you know. Yeah, there's an aspect of it. I will say this. If they don't fix the damn seats in Silverado, I'm not going to drive it. I refuse. That that three-quarter ton I have outside, I'm gonna, the video will drop probably drop tomorrow. I'll just finish driving it. Um, if they don't improve the seats, I don't know how you guys buy those things. I, I don't know. I mean, it was... I spent... What did I spend? Eight to one o'clock, so four or five hours driving this truck um, back and forth. It hurt. I got out and I was in pain. And I don't understand why people buy this thing because demand better seats. I, if I bought a Silverado, I would legitimately uh, do aftermarket seats. I would find somebody to do it. I would have to. It, it, my condition for buying a Silverado would be aftermarket seats. I can't sit in it. And I don't understand why seat comfort is not a bigger thing i don't understand that like you yeah. never see the reviews you never see people talk about that at all right jill and i talk about this but you never see that i talk about it all the time right but but that's what we makes us different is because we talk about practical things impact us and those seats are freaking terrible now i will say it yeah. rode better or drove better than the f-250 i had because uh, solid front axle versus independent front suspension, yada, yada. I still need 500 pounds of payload in the back of both these trucks. That's just what's going to happen. But I don't understand why those seats are so terrible. Uh, would I consider a 2022 Frontier? I would. Um, I would. I, I just, I don't know. It's it's like, um, uh, it's not big enough. Like, I, the, the front, so I will have videos on this. We're, we're way Wait, beyond it's time. it's not big enough? What? No, I mean, I, I, I have... So, Swede is basically a midsize at this... At, okay. <laughs> he used to be a full-size 62. He's really a midsize these days. And I like full-size. I want a full-size truck because I like the room of the family. If I was only by myself, mm -hmm. I could do a midsize for sure. I And I could do that all day long. Um, yeah, I just... I don't understand. I, the guys are commenting, and I'm like... I don't understand why the, the Silverado seats are so terrible. I would legitimately buy that truck and swap seats out. And I would tell Mark Royce and Mary Barra, congrats on EV car progress. Your seats suck. And I don't know how the hell you sit in these damn things. My dad had a Buick Encore or Enclave, whatever he did. He had, a, he had pillows in that vehicle so he could drive it. So I do want to say I had the Buick Envision last week. And those seats were actually not awful. Maybe. I liked the seats in the Buick Envision. I, and Buick seats, I find, are typically better than other GM vehicles. Um, but but I liked I liked the seats in the Envision. Tommy says um, he thinks they, the Gladiator seats are worse. I will say this, Tommy. I agree with you. The Gladiator position is terrible. It's like you're sitting inside the windshield. <laughs> Which it's, I just I don't understand. I mean, I I, I would not. I drove the I've drove the Gladiator twice now in uh, what I drive two different off road versions and I will tell you that I want the Overland I want to drive the Overland I have driven the Overland I will tell you both times I was not happy driving that vehicle I I don't like the truck why I just because the seating position I like I mean it's cool looking it's got cool features the bed's a little bit too short I do like the fact you can do the tailgate down and actually. Extend the bed a little bit. They have a built-in spot for that because they knew it was going to be too short. But I, I don't like the seating position is terrible and the seats are terrible. Like for a long – if you're driving a store, driving 20, 30 minutes here and there, okay, fine. But if you're going to drive this thing, road trip this thing, it's not going to happen. Okay, so speaking of seats, before we sign off, we have to talk about the Tacoma because I'm driving the Tacoma this week. And I just literally drove from Miami to Orlando four hours. And I, it, you asked me how the seats were. And I was like, right, they right. were great. And you're like, wait, there's controversy here. So explain. So, yeah, we're not ending this live stream anytime short. Uh, anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, do you need to go get more whiskey? Uh, yeah, I have a problem here. But the store is, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to finish. The store is closed? Left. What? I'm done. I'm not going to do any more tonight. I want to sleep tonight. Uh, anyways, anyways, the Tacoma has the, it's so fascinating. You find these seats somewhat comfortable. The Tacoma has had historically a really bad seating position for many people because you sit on the floor. Aberration, apparently. 
Now well, I know what's comfortable for me. A Toyota Tacoma. <laughs> Everything else sucks. I don't know. We just, we just got like 900 subscribers because you said that. I mean, that's what's going to happen. Because <laughs> I ripped them. And so here's what... Uh, 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 I, I have found when I drove the Tacoma in shortened segments and, and not for longer week period, I have found the seats are okay once I get in. Now, now wait a minute here. You are the size of my 11 year old. You, I was I was looking at him the other day. And I was going to say your 11 year old is probably bigger than me, but go on. You are the size of, and I will tell you that when you walk, when you get in this truck, the chief engineer, not Mike Swears, new chief engineer, I had a video of him in Chicago. And uh, he got in the truck, and when he got in, you put your head forward, and you put your head, like, in, and then you sit back. Because of the way the angle of the truck is, if you go out there and look at the Tacoma. You're gonna, your mind's going to be blown. Look at the Tacoma versus other Colorado and, and Frontier, whatever. It's very slim. As they made it slim, you have an issue getting your head in the Tacoma. Um, it's, it's a whole issue. There's That's lots of conversations about this. That's only if you have a big this. head, Tim. What? I said that's only if you have a big head. Okay, yeah, yeah I do, <laughs> ego-wise. But anyways, but he, I made the engineer get in, and he had the same damn problem. He had the same problem I did. Now, once you get in, you okay. sit low. So I was in uh, Detroit, no, Denver Auto Show, oh, what was it, 19 when they made a change? And they put powered seats in this Tacoma. If you raise the seat up, like, inch and a half, my head actually went through the moonroof, the sunroof, whatever you want to call those things. I actually went through like this, and I can see over top of the hood. It's legit, Jill. You are going to, I'm telling you, if you weren't five feet tall, you would have the same problems I do. If people didn't, yeah, uh, you would. Make make your sister, make your sister get in. I know your sister okay. is taller than you and a little bit uh, wider. And get her, make her get in. And she, I know, she, she will, I'm telling you. It, when you sit in the seats, you're sitting on the floor because the head that it's so tall and looking below the steering wheel, and you get a raised seat up, and it's in the it's in the center roof, and and I want you here's what I want you to do. Emmy Hall ha and I had this conversation. We've had these conversations. What I want you to do is I want you to make your sister get in in the truck, get your daddy in the truck, get your mom in the truck, whatever, uh, and stand outside, and I want you to watch as they enter and exit the truck. I want you to watch where their head goes. And whether or not they put their legs in first and then they back up their head, whether or not they put their head in first and back up their legs. I, it, it's fascinating because people are like, oh, my Tacoma seats are awesome. You guys are full of it. You don't know what you're talking about. You just need to get a truck. And then I ask them how they okay, get in. So and they're like, I get in fine. I'm like, no, no, no. How do you really get in? How does your girlfriend or your, your how your, if you're, if your girl, how's your boyfriend see you get in a truck? How do you get in a truck? Where's your head go? Because it's, it's a very, it's a very sloped, it's a very sloped cabin. All right, so that actually has nothing to do with the seats themselves. But no, no. So, but but when you you get in, then <laughs> that has nothing to do with the seats. But the when you get in, then because really of the way that slope is, you have to sit down lower and you have to raise the seat up to be able to see over the steering wheel. You do. I guarantee. I guarantee you, your seat is raised. All I have to say is I have a really good drive. Well, duh. I'm five feet tall. My seat is always raised, but I have a very good driving position. And the seat bottom, the actual seat, was very comfortable. I, want, I like so I had good lumbar support. The back was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't feel like the seat was too stiff. Like the seat itself was comfortable. I I, I think you're nuts. No, and you're too tall. But but know. here's the thing: lower the seat down to the the lowest setting, because that was the way the okay. seat had been. For the last four years, four or five, whatever it was, the seat. I don't do this. Put this. Do your. Do your, You know what? Do your TikTok thing. Do your TikTok thing. Put the seat all the way down. And and do a video on this okay. because I'm telling you, that was the seating position for years until they switched it in 2020. I think it was when they switched 2020. Uh, there's a video on the website and and I will send the video link. But there's a video and there's video and stuff. I will tell you, those seats are absolutely atrocious. And that Tacoma is the best selling mid sized truck on the market by far. 
so you're wrong is basically what you just said. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. I don't think people care. I don't think, I don't understand why people don't care. Resale value. I said fine. And then, and then they bitch at me about it. And then they actually, I'm telling you, they bitch at me about it. And they say, you're full of crap, whatever. And then they literally go back and they get in the truck again. And they ask, and they're like, my passengers are fine. They ask their passengers. The passengers are like, no, it's terrible. Like, people don't realize it, but they love the slim shape. They love the slim shape of the Tacoma. They have ground clearance for days. You can tackle stuff, no problem. But, I, yeah. I, I So, th- here we go. People are arguing on the live stream about the Tacoma seating. It, it, it's, uh, Tommy's saying it's like a Porsche 911 without the Porsche because you sit down so much lower in it. I'm telling you, people have very, very strong like I opinions. Low. I do not feel like I sat low. You, you lower that seat down. Lower the seat all the way down. Why would I do that? Because that's the way it was. Okay, but that's not the way it is now. Well, yeah, but still, make your sister get in. I'm... Whatever. <laughs> I'm telling like, you. I, I doubt my sister. By the way, I doubt my sister will let me film her on video, but I will try. Well, make her, get, but just watch her get in. Watch other people get into this truck. Okay. I will tell you, it, 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 uh, Emmy Hall and I went back and forth on this. I think, I don't know if Tommy and I talked about this at all, but people argue with me and then I make them get in the truck with me standing there and I film them or uh, I talk about it, whatever, and their minds are blown because they never realized it. You don't realize this until you watch me else do it. it it's, it, you, you grab your steering wheel, head goes in, head goes under, head goes back. I see people do this all the time, Tacoma. Okay, I do that in, like, every vehicle because I'm, like, step up and I, like, kind of duck down because I'm, like, I could basically stand inside the cabin. I know. I, my daughter, who is about your height, well, maybe a little, maybe an inch or two taller than your height, she gets into vehicles, like, she goes through, like, chest first, then butt, then twitch and turns. It's a really weird thing she does and just drove me nuts when I saw her do it that one time. Uh, actually a couple times when I drove with her. So I'm like, I don't know how she gets in this Tacoma, but it, it is, it is weird. It, 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 I'm telling you, it's, it's people love Tacoma and they will argue with me about seat position all the time. People will not, will hate it and point it out to me. I did not, I will tell you this. I did not realize that Tacoma was this way until Dan Edmonds pointed out to me at a launch. And Dan Edmonds is six, two, six, three, whatever he is. And he used to work for for Toyota. He, Tacoma was his program. He used to do the suspension for the Tacoma. And he pointed out to me, and I did not realize until he pointed out to me. And then I asked other people about it. And Brian Armstead, oh, yeah, he probably has a huge problem with Tacomas, right? Brian Armstead is like, what is he? Is he two Jills? He's nine. He, he, so I actually have a very funny photo. Um, I, he was also in Miami, by the way. Yes. And so I have a very funny photo of him and me together and i was just like oh this is an appropriately socially distanced photo because he's so much taller than i am right i, I just he I, literally blocked out the sun yeah it is everybody's got a different way to get in this truck everybody's got a different viewpoint on it i will tell you i've driven yeah. it to um i've driven long distance with it i've done camping with it i've done lots of this truck and i will tell you that i hit my head every time i get into tacoma i hit this side of my head Okay. On the slope of the windshield every time I get in. And I, it didn't, maybe I hit my head too many times. It didn't dawn on me until I actually talked to other guys about it and started really looking at this. Tommy says, I have to drive the Tacoma like a 95 year old grandma or the Kanye lean back, no other options. Because <laughs> you, know, cause, cause you gotta like slide in and then like lean back, like you're. You're balling. That's okay, so I just I I wanna I wanna just say Tommy just called me a ninety five year old grandma. <laughs> I just want to point that out and say thanks so much for that. It is. It, the, yeah. So Tuffy says the gangster lean. You do. You do the gangster lean with this thing because the way the slope of the windshield is, I the thing is, it, it, it's only in what is it the 14, 15, 16? Because the, the the one they bought, the one TFL bought. It has more of an upright windshield and it's more of a straight cabin. And so the the ones that are older are like more like Colorado where you can get in no problem. The newer ones, the way the slope is, it's a whole issue. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to have to film a video of me getting into the vehicle and setting up my driving position. 
Um, and, and we'll see if my sister will let me, um, film her. Um, and my mother refuses to even try to get in the vehicle. So that's not happening. Um, maybe, maybe I'll find one of my neighbors, yeah, uh, to, neighbors to come over and see if they'll get in. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just telling you, it's, it's a whole thing with this truck and it's an under, underreported part of the industry. And, um, I just find it fascinating. This thing keeps selling even though it has to me what amounts to as a fundamental flaw, which, oh, Jill, that could be your story. You could say, does the Tacoma have a fundamental flaw and do photos of you getting in and out and do photos of this stuff and that would blow apart. We would get tons of hate mail. We'd get a bunch of effing idiots and then we get people that are cheering us on. It'd be it'd be incredible. But I would I would prove you wrong because there is no fundamental flaw when you're putting a 95-pound female who is apparently a 95-year-old <laughs> grandma in the driver's seat. It's totally fine. <laughs> But, no, I mean, it, it, this is something, I'm telling you. Yeah, so James says, can't wait for the YouTube short. Yeah, literally, YouTube short. Um, anyways, but Literally I... Literally and figuratively. <laughs> but, I'm telling you, this thing is, it, it's it, people love it, people hate it. I see, the, uh, I don't know, it is one of those things. Jay is way, <laughs> Jill is way too trendy to be 95. It has a manual, Jill, right up your alley. Yes, yes, Jill has manual love. She's in a manual love affair. Unfortunately, my truck it, that I'm driving this week is an automatic, but oh, yeah. yes. Uh, Elliot keeps pointing oh, out, blah. Elliot does point out, he thinks people are just aren't as picky as journalists. Yes, yes, that is true. We are exceedingly picky. I get it. Elliot makes his point yet again. Bravo, Elliot. <laughs> but we have right. to be picky. We have to be picky for everybody else. Yeah, I think sometimes we have to point right? out, we, yeah, we have to point out things that people don't notice because that's... At the end of the day, everybody can love about a vehicle. Everybody can say all oh, great things about a vehicle. But it to me, a journalist really points out the flaws, really really dives deep, really finds things they don't like. I mean, that's that's the true the true source of a journalist, I should say. Somebody that really you know finds those things out. And whether you agree with whether you agree or don't agree with us, at least you're gonna see a viewpoint that's different. Yes. All right. All right. I think that's we've done an hour and twenty. We've, we've done way too long in this. But I'm, I am telling you that Tacoma is... There's an issue there. All right, hey. Um, I, oh, I just dropped that. Where'd it go? I'll find it tomorrow. Anyways, uh, make, <laughs> sure, make sure you click other videos. Uh, we do have the podcast fired up again. I am putting stuff up on Buzzsprout if you need the link for that. If you're missing the live stream on video, find us over there just because I was cheap and it's easy to upload audio over there. No problem. Um, I do... Really appreciate Jill phoning in from Florida. Um, she's with her family. That's really impressive. From the bunker. From, from the, the bunker, bunker. From the bunker in Florida. Um, we will be getting together. <laughs> Which, in case you didn't notice, there's like photos of me and my family <laughs> right, behind my right. head. So if you have zoomed in, you, have, you know, geocache location, stop it, weirdo. It, I know. I'm like, there was, there was a marathon up there somewhere. I yeah, think yeah, it was a, that one. That was my PR. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I and, I, I, and um, yeah, uh, Jill's got a great family there. And I actually had the privilege of meeting them and seeing them in, um, well, I don't know, what's it, it been a month ago? Been that long? Yeah, it feels a like a month. Yeah, anyways. Um, but yeah, we're going to hit the road. Forever, but you know. Hopefully pretty soon and hopefully get some more videos for you guys because um, I don't know if you can tell, but Jill and I really enjoy doing this channel and really enjoy working together. And I'm really appreciated that Worksheet's website. I think we're doing. So I'm going to wrap this up and say good night, everybody. Good night. See you later. Goodbye. We will see you down the road.